Good morning. Thanks for joining us again. And uh, starting out on a little walk of about uh, six and a half, seven miles. And we're going to Paris Mountain, which is neither a mountain uh, or in Paris. It's actually a, an old copper mine. Uh, so we're uh, heading up to see what that looks like. Uh, I've plotted the uh, route out for you, but we're just starting from near Amluk Port and um, heading up a, a track to the left behind an old uh, chapel and uh, then picking up a footpath to the right up there. But you'll see it all plotted out on the OS Maps app if you uh, click on the link below. So hopefully you'll uh, come along with us and see what we find. Damsons, I think. That's the best. Starting to dry out a bit, but uh, looks like the birds are going to have plenty to eat. Loads of blackberries too. And uh, just been on one of the uh, little plaques I've just read. Uh, this is part of the Anglesey Copper Coast Trail. And uh, Looks like the uh, paths are looked after by the Innismoan Ramblers Association. And I have to say, top marks to them for all the paths that we've used, whether it's the, you know, part of the Isle of Anglesey coastal path or some of these more inland ones, all very well looked after. Um, and little bits, you know, where you, you need to cross streams and you've laid down planks or uh, built little bridges, uh, the majority of the styles are well maintained. Yeah, hats off to them. Reviews back behind you, out to sea. Amluk port and uh, Amluk a bit further to the left. As you just get to the top of the rise, you can see where we're heading now. Uh, see some of the colours from the copper and uh, some remnants of old mining equipment and what looks like a uh, windmill. You just uh, come down out of the fields and cross a, a big road, I think it's an A road. Um, quite busy, so take care. And then head directly up a, a, a track opposite. It looks like it used to be part of the, uh, the mine tracks. And uh, yeah, we're getting fairly close now. Does this count as going to Paris for your wedding anniversary? <laughs> Never been. <laughs> right, so just at the top of the track, path turns right, and then you can explore a network of paths around the site of the mine. So We'll see what we find. Then we're going to find a path in the far corner uh, to take a different route back.
tight for a little bit. So from what I've read, there's been uh, copper ore and other minerals mined here right since the Bronze Age. But um, I think it was in about 1760 they discovered a, a real huge uh, load of copper and uh, this area became the uh, copper capital of the entire world it says for about a decade so quite short lived but I don't know I'm not sure how long in total the uh, the mining went on for it's obviously uh, quite an operation here and then there's all the you know the port was built uh, talking to an interesting guy in the pub last night and he said it was um, Cornish tin miners that uh, came here and actually um, blasted out the kind of natural inlet to make it um, you know a proper port for bigger vessels to get in and then uh, use the rock that was blasted out to actually line the uh, sides of the port that you can see today so uh, yeah there's loads of fascinating stuff in the area on another planet. Assisted steam engine, mountain yeah so just reading the uh, just reading the boards inside the windmill and there was over a hundred pits um, some as great as 285 meters deep and there's uh, 20 kilometers of tunnels under here accessing all the uh, different pits so uh, massive organization <laughs>
is a a triple SI site of special scientific interest. Try saying that after a beer. Um, with a number of plants that can only grow in this uh, highly acidic environment. Quite specialised. But uh, yeah, it's a fantastic place. I'd highly recommend it if you do get a chance to visit if you're in the area. just as we uh, exit the site so we've just got a little short stretch along uh, country lane here and then I think we've got about 100 yards left along the A road and then we uh, pick up a track to our right so uh, hopefully the A road's safe to walk along but we'll soon find out Nice little old moggy miner there. Should polish up that. Right, just along the A road for a bit. It's not brilliant to walk along, but uh, there's a, there is a verge, so it's not so bad. After about 100 yards along that A road, there's a cottage. Look down to your right past the cottage and you'll see the path. Bit down beside that white house it is pretty sketchy, overgrown. Um, doesn't really look like they want you there, but it is the footpath, and uh, you kind of cut across. Like it's, there's a broken down sort of walkway across a stream, but it is it is passable. And then you're looking across the field, and there is a, a stile that takes you to the other side of a stone wall, and that is what you're looking for. So after the rickety stile. It's uh, straight downhill across the field and there's a, there's a, a gate at the uh, bottom end. It's uh, a little bit sketchy this section so uh, follow the, uh, the map carefully. Just down at the bottom here you should hopefully be able to turn right I think double check when we get across. Yeah, we turn right at the bottom but keep the wall to your left. There is a uh, footpath marking post. Right, we carry on on this uh, footpath for a uh, good way now, maybe, maybe a kilometre, maybe a bit less, but you know you're in the right direction because you should be passing below the um, pit lift uh, just to the, to the left of it, you can see it up on the top of the hill and uh, just carry on through this farmland through the farmyard here at Paris Farm. It does look a little bit sketchy on the map where the footpaths go but there's a footpath running up to it and there's a footpath leaving it so uh, let's see how we get on. Right well we've just had a quite an interesting loop round trying to uh, plot our circuit back uh, but we ended up having a half hour conversation with a, a nice farmer um, because the 
the path that we follow down to um, Paris Farm his uh, neighbouring uh, property owner has actually blocked the footpath which is marked on the uh, map and refuses to let people through um, now he was going to let us let us through his property but uh, obviously because I want to share the route on um, OS maps I don't want to be uh, sharing a, a route that's not uh, a, a proper footpath so uh, so I'll be sharing a route that takes us back round the other side of uh, Paris mountain and then just hooks up with the trail that we came up on so uh, yeah oh well these things sometimes happen on walks when you're uh, trying to uh, plot your own circuit but uh, you live and learn right nearly done now uh, we're about a kilometre away from the campsite and uh, well by the time we get back we'll have done about nine miles but uh, some of that is courtesy of the uh, kindly landowner who closed the footpath uh, but uh, yeah the uh, farmer we spoke to actually advised us to contact the uh, local council about that see if we could get something done about it because uh, he doesn't appreciate it either because it uh, causes people to trespass across his land so he'd like it sorted out anyway um, I'll, prop, I'll plot the route that you can actually do but it'll be more of a kind of an out and back along the same stick with a circuit around Paris Mountain at the end and um, Paris Mountain itself is uh, well worth a visit it's really uh, something else quite otherworldly uh, so uh, if you're in the area I'd recommend you take a look um, but thanks for joining us and if you have enjoyed it if you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up and maybe if you haven't already you'd consider subscribing to the channel as it uh, really does help so uh, with that we'll say ta and we'll uh, catch you again sometime in the uh, not too distant future cheers now see ya